Ciao and hello. Welcome back to Little Red Roaming. I'm your magnanimous host, Little Red, and today I'm going to be telling you about my three favorite cities. Uh, just as a disclaimer, these three cities, I'm only adding in cities that I've been to. There are plenty of cities in the world I haven't been to, so they're not counted in this list. Secondary is I'm only picking cities um, that are not in my backyard. So Boston, Providence, I'm sorry guys, but you're not eligible for this list because I've grown up with you and therefore I have like a soft spot for both of you. Um, lastly is that I'm only picking one city from each country. And this is just to keep things a little bit more fair so that I'm not, you know, really favoring one general location over any other because everywhere is so different and has different merits and different things that I enjoyed about being there. So with that in mind, let's, um, yeah, let's get started and let me tell you about my three favorite cities that I have been to so far in my travels. So the first city that I'm going to tell you about is number three on my list and that city is Vienna, Austria. Now when I was in Vienna, I had a couch surfing host who I became very good friends with. And he was kind enough to show me around the city a little bit. While there, we went into a bunch of different churches and I got to really see, you know, the, that side of the culture of Vienna as well as the architecture involved there. And it was really interesting to me to see you know, the different colors that each group favored, the different stylistic elements. Um, and I really enjoyed that. It was, a, it was a unique way to look at a city. Vienna on its own, as I wandered around it, is very stately. It's grandiose and it's, it's huge, beautiful architecture and buildings of stone, you know. They feel both heavy and graceful at the same time. I went to an open air market for a little while and just wandered around and that was lovely. The city itself feels very at peace. It's aware of its own opulence and it's comfortable with that. It's not, it doesn't feel imposing and it doesn't feel full of itself as some cities of that measure could feel. Instead, it feels airy and light and kind of fun. And that makes sense for a city where, you know, there's been a birthplace of so many amazing musicians and amazing artists that come out of this area. And that makes perfect sense to me, especially once I saw the countryside outside of Vienna. Austria is a gorgeous, gorgeous country. I only spent mm, less than 48 hours there. And I'm still kicking myself for that. I am just dying to go back. Austria was one of the most beautiful countrysides and most amazingly welcoming places that I have ever had the privilege of visiting. So that's why it makes number three on my list. It's not only because the feeling of being there stayed with me, but because I'm just dying to go back. It's, it's a place that I feel like I could explore for a lot longer and a lot more intensely than I did end up, you know, being able to see while I was there. So the second, second city on my list is Edinburgh. Scotland and so the reason that this city makes my list is because it's such a unique place you know it's a very old city and you walk down the street and you'll see an alleyway off to the side and it's really dark and there might even be water dripping down on the side and it might not smell that great but if you 
kind of turn sideways and you venture down that alleyway, suddenly it'll open up and there's a courtyard with a garden or, or a water fountain. And it's just hidden away back there. And it's these beautiful little pockets all over the city. That I kept running into and, you know, I would never find the same one twice. Beads me. I could never find my way back to a single one of them. But there were these little gems all over the city. And it felt like, it felt like Embra had secrets. It had these little secrets that I was kind of starting to uncover, but every time I turned around they were gone. And so it never really gave itself up to me. And I felt like the entire time I was there I was kind of reaching and trying to figure it out and solve this puzzle but it never quite let me. And I really, I loved that about it. It was such a really fun city to walk around in. You know, every day I was there, I did something new, and I saw something new, and I learned something new. I went on a walking tour of the underground city, which was, you know, not totally excavated yet, but some of the lore and the ghost stories were really, really twisted and messed up. <laughs> and you know, you go and you check out Edinburgh Castle, and it's this gorgeous, sprawling, stone, ancient castle. Full of history. Full to the brim with Scottish history. And if you're interested in history at all, you cannot miss this castle. And you can spend a whole day there. I know I did. I spent like five, six hours there easily. And that was like rushing through because I had other plans for later on that I was trying to make sure I didn't miss. But you could easily spend more than that there. And I also went on a bar crawl while I was in Edinburgh, which was tons of fun. Oh my goodness meet so many people in Scotland and they're all just so friendly and welcoming and sometimes I had no idea what they were saying. It's Scottish accent. Like I know you're speaking English, but I are you really speaking English? I'm I'm teasing of course. I mean I loved it. It was so fun to listen to. Yeah, so Edinburgh Edinburgh makes my my number two spot because it's it's a city that I could feel comfortable going back to over and over again and feel like I'm learning something new every single time that I'm there and seeing something new. You know, there's there's never enough time in the world to see all of Edinburgh. So the third and final city on my list was a little bit harder to choose for me. Uh, it was a toss up between two cities in Italy that I fell in love with because they're both beautiful, vibrant, friendly, and welcoming cities. However, between the two, I'm going to have to go with Rio Maggiore. The first town of the Cinque Terre, which is five villages on the coast. And the villages are set in these little valleys almost, with, you know, these, these rocky mountainous walls that come up and go back down, and then in the little dip in the valley, there's, there's another village. And so there's five of those. And there's, there's like a, a train that goes in between. Underneath the mountains, but you can also hike over them. And I did the first two hikes. There's four total, I didn't do the other, the other two because I was exhausted. These are not the easiest of hikes, I will admit. I'm not the most athletic person, and they were difficult. And that's kind of one of the charming things about this place, is that I really got to actually get out of the city to enjoy some nature while I was here. Really, really, really get into, like, getting dirty and back to, back to being underneath some trees and away from cars. It was a quiet place. The, the views are breathtaking. When you look down, you know, from, from the edges of these 
cliffs and you see these terraced farming going on along each edge of the edge of the mountains and then this sprawling blue. This aquamarine gorgeous blue that practically just dazzles. It, it, well, when the sunlight hits it, you feel like you, you've stepped into a painting. Lemon trees everywhere, and there's little lizards running around your feet. Ugh, oh, Rio Maggiore. My hat goes off to you. It is such a phenomenal place. In each of the cities of the Cinque Terre, all the buildings are painted brightly colored. You know, crazy bright colors, pinks and oranges and blues and greens. And everywhere you look, every building is a different color. Um, supposedly, this is so when fishermen were coming back home, they could kind of spot which house was theirs. It also will make the village more visible if it was foggy. So it's, it's kind of versatile and useful and also really pretty to look at. One of my favorite things to do when I was in Rio Maggiore was actually just to walk down to the harbor um, and out on the rocks. You know, they kind of come out like this. You could sit on the rocks and it was the most amazingly perfect spot to just watch the sun go down and drink a beer, maybe have some gelato, maybe eat some dinner while you're down there, just sitting on the rocks by the water, you know, the waves are lapping in and out. You get maybe a couple, a handful of little boats, but nothing big, you know, it's not a big harbor. Oh my goodness, it's such a tiny little place. But it is the perfect spot to watch the sunset. Absolutely perfect. While I was in Rio Maggiore, I also needed new sneakers. And this was my first day here. I found a little shop. And this little Italian woman had me find shoes that were in my size. And then she pulled down every single pair of shoes that, they, that she had that were in my size. And even though the first pair I tried on were really great and they were really comfortable and they fit really well, she made me try on all the other ones because the first pair was really expensive. And she wanted me to make sure that I was getting a pair that fit and that I could afford as well. She was so sweet and so motherly the entire time and, you know, helped me communicate back and forth with her because my Italian is not very good. I've been working at it. I've been trying, but my Italian is still not very good. So we back and forth kind of struggled our way through explaining what I needed and what she was helping me with. And she was just lovely. And then I did my hikes in in the sneakers that I bought from her. And I saw her, you know, sitting outside her shop, you know, a day or so later. And she kind of was like, ah, yeah. And like trying to ask me if the shoes were good. And I, and I was like, yeah, they're fine. Ago and she was just beside herself, smiling, and just so happy. And that was great! And you know, what a wonderful feeling that a stranger actually takes pleasure in helping you make sure that, you know, this simple thing works for you, and that she, she was able to help you find the right pair of shoes. Now, as any traveler knows, shoes are super important. You know, it's the one thing that I won't skimp on and I won't buy cheap because they're so important for your posture and your body mechanics and your comfort level and yada 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 yada. They're just really important and you should never skimp on them. And so I ended up buying the first pair of shoes that I tried on there. They were the more expensive ones, but they still fit and I still wear them regularly and I still love them dearly. Um, and I will probably order another pair once these ones wear out because they're really, they're actually, they're called Dude. That's just, the brand is just Dude, D-U-D-E. Um, but they're great and they're so comfy. Anyway, Rio Maggiore, yeah. Lovely city. Absolutely lovely. Um, if you go there, please try the pesto. I, just try the pesto if you go to Rio Maggiore. Don't forget it. Anywhere in the Cinque Terre, just try the pesto. Uh, there's, you know, there's lemon trees everywhere, and it's just so green 
and earthy and bright. And if you are, you know, backpacking around and you really feel like you're sick of being in big cities, this is a great place to go to reconnect with kind of the dirt, really, and reconnect with peace and quiet because there's not really any cars here. It's such a, it's an at peace kind of place. Now mind you, I went on the off season, so that might have something to do with it too. Rio Maggiore, definitely my, my number one. Um, I see myself going back there someday. Maybe even staying at the same hostel because I really enjoyed it there too. So I wanna thank you for joining me in watching my second ever YouTube video. Uh, I do owe you a little bit of an apology that this video did not come out on Wednesday. I was actually very sick earlier this week and not able to sit down and film it. Thank you for your patience, and, and I really appreciate it. If you found what I said to be entertaining, informative, uh, then please, I would love it if you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, maybe leave me a comment. Um, tell me what, what you liked, what you think I could do better, anything like that would be so appreciated. Anyway, again, I am Little Red. This is Little Red Roaming. And if you would like to hear more from me, you can also check out my blog at www.littleredroaming.com. I also have a Snapchat and an Instagram of the same name, so I will link those below the video. Um, so yeah, check me out, give me a shout if anything I say is of interest to you, or if you want to connect and just talk about travel, because I love meeting new people, and having other travelers to talk to is always a lot of fun. Or potential travelers, you don't have to be a traveler yet, but you'll get there, I promise. Travel bug will bite you. Alright, you guys have a wonderful weekend, happy Friday, I will talk to you soon, bye!